So I want you to have a look at this. I want you to think with me. What do we know about this thing? Well, we know how frequently it waves up and down or left and right or whatever it is. Okay. We know where it starts. We know how fast it's going and what direction it's going in. And we also know where the center is. Now, this is a bit unusual because there's something we usually know about simple harmonic motion, something obvious that hasn't been told to you here. What are we missing? Have a look at say, this graph. When we drew it, how did we draw it? We went from the center of motion. And then the immediate next thing I asked you was, well, how far away can I get from the center of motion? Okay. How far can this thing get from the center of motion? We don't know. Answer. Don't know. You don't know. You don't know. Now, you could say two. It's gotta be at it's gotta be at least two. But who says you're you're starting at an extreme? Nothing has told you you're starting at an extreme at the moment. In fact, I don't think I can be starting at an extreme. Why? How do I know I'm not starting at an extreme? Sorry. Thank you. A person for light behind you already had the same answer. Velocity is not zero, right? The velocity is not zero. At the extremes of motion, you momentarily pause. Your velocity is zero. It's a stationary point, right? And then you come back towards the center. So I'm not in an extreme. Um, I'm certainly not at the center because look, that's, they're not the same. So I'm somewhere in between. So this is weird. How do I work this out? Okay. Now, let's start to unfold this. What could I do? What could I do to try and work out a displacement equation from here? Okay, so I can find n. n I can work out. I get that from the period, right? So I'm just going to write 2 pi on n equals 6. n equals pi on 3. That's good, okay? But when I go to write my equation of motion, I know my center is 0, so that's, that's nice. That's just 0 out there. But I don't have a number here. Oh, I don't know. This is the whole point. I, this is my problem. So I'm just going to write a, because I don't know. Do I choose sine or cosine? We don't know. Well, remembering that, it doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter. You can choose either, but one is more convenient than the other. We know that sine is better if you start at the origin, and cosine is better if you start at an extreme, at an extreme, okay? But I'm at neither of those. I know I'm not at the center initially, and we just established that we're not at the either of the extremes, right? So if you want, if you want sign, fine. I'll, I'll go with sign. But my point is, like, there's no obvious convenient choice here. Okay, like I'm somewhere between the center and the extreme. So it doesn't matter which one you choose. Sign is nice to differentiate. No, ne less negatives. Okay. All right. Uh, what else have I got here? Okay. So I, I worked out what the n was. So that's pi on three t. And then there's there's some phase that I have to work out, and that's what makes me not start at the center or not start at the extremes. Okay, so I have, count them, one, two unknowns. How do I solve them? Okay, good. If I get the velocity equation, I can use this piece of information, and I've already got um, a piece of information about displacement, so I can use both of those. So let's just quickly differentiate. What am I going to get? Pi on 3, A plus pi on 3 plus B plus R. Cool. Simple chain rule. Okay. So then I'm going to use my initial conditions, right? So I'm going to say initially, first, let's do displacement. Okay. So the displacement equation tells me, uh, here's the displacement equation, right? So I've got a sine of what? This is initial, right? Initially, initially, zero. initially t equals, t equals zero. So I've got zero plus alpha. So a sine alpha equals, good, okay. So sine alpha is negative 2 on a. So I don't have enough information yet, but that's okay because I have another initial condition, velocity. Right? There's my velocity equation. So what am I going to write here? a pi on 3 cos of equals 3. Cool. So I can say from this, cos alpha equals 9 on pi on a. <laughs> On a 9 pi on what? Nine. Nine. Yeah. 9 on a pi? That's, that's a messy a. That's a negative 2 on a. Yeah. Okay, what do I do with this? Yeah. Just triangles. Okay, so I can draw some triangles, right? Um, I can do that. If I wanted to try, this is like the auxiliary angle kind of situation, right? 
to help me interpret my triangles, I can actually say tan alpha. I can divide through. I just have to be careful with what I get at the other end. But you'll see in a minute, I won't have to worry about this. What is tan alpha? Uh, uh, minus 2. two negative 2 pi on 9. Yeah. Yes. So do you Cross out that this divided by this, yeah? Sine alpha oh, on cos alpha. Flips. Yep, so this flips and then you multiply through. Okay, so I've got that. So therefore alpha is equal to? 10 inverse minus 2 pi on Okay. Now I'm going to pause for a moment and say, um, yes, partly. I'll, I'll tell you why in a second. I've got to worry about the negative, like which case I've got in a second. I can sort of use that here, right, and work out which one is which. I suppose I would choose a positive A. There's no reason why I would choose a negative A. And then I can work out the signs and go ahead, okay? But I'm just going to pause and point out, gross, right? Doesn't that look terrible? Um, number one, that's what I've got for alpha. And this is obviously going to be some decimal garbage out here, right, in radians. And then after that, I've got to work out uh, what's my other thing. Hey, I've got to work out my amplitude. That's all going to be terrible. It's a bit of a disaster at the moment, okay? So I don't really want to have to go down this path. I wonder if there's something I can choose, something earlier that I assume that will make all of this sort of unfold easier for me, right? Now, let me point out, what I'm about to show you, you do not have to guess. You don't have to predict. This will be handed to you. But it's still, I want you to see why they hand it to you. Here, here comes the key. Here comes the key to unlock this, right? Um, look at my first black line. You see my first black line? Uh, that's where the problems began. That's where the problems began. So I'm going to introduce, just like I had over here, this like I had cod squareds in my equation of displacement, right? I've got a new equation for you that's going to make everything brilliant. Watch. Here's my new displacement equation. Like, what do I do? Okay, all right. Now, you see, the question will give this to you. So they're not, they're not expecting you to guess that this will be helpful, okay? But I wanted to show you guys, why would people even go to, I've got equations that are just fine. Why, why you do this more trig functions to me? Because when you just have one, sometimes you land in really disgusting spots. I don't want to do that, okay? I'm going to rehearse again, same information, but I'm going to go with this, okay? Watch. For starters, you already know M. Right, you've already worked out the period. It's um, so I'm going to put that in. So I've got this. Okay. Now, by the way, can I just justify why is this legit? Why can I do this? I thought we said simple harmonic motion was only one sine or cosine. Why is this okay? Okay, good. The sum of two wave functions still a wave function, and if they've got the same period. I can use auxiliary angle and I can turn this back into this if I wanted to. I don't, because you can see the problems it lands in. But if I wanted to, I can. So it's still simple harmonic motion. If you took this, you did x dot, and then you did x double dot, you're still going to get minus n squared, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so it's fine. All right, now let's use our initial conditions. Watch this, all right? Initially, oh, I need to differentiate. Sorry, can we differentiate? Can you give me a derivative? Oh, I did just... Pi on 3. Well, let me take that out. This is going to turn into cos. And this is going to turn into? Minus sine. Oops, there's a C there. Okay. Did I? Oh. Yep, I took him out because I knew he would come in twice. Okay. So now I'm going to say initially. Okay. Displacement first. Okay. Um, here we go. Here's my here's my displacement equation, right? So when t equals zero, what's going to happen on the left hand side? I'm going to have b sine zero plus c c cos zero. Do you see why this is better? Why is it better? I don't have to worry about this alpha guy, right? That's the whole point. This is the auxiliary angle, but it causes us problems, right? So let's not worry about it. I'm going to write that's my left hand side. What is this equal to? To minus two. Initially, my displacement's negative two. two. Do you agree? Yeah. So, so look, this is zero, and that's one. Okay. So I've got one constant. Then I use velocity to find the other one. Velocity. Here we go. Um, this is pi on three outside of. Okay. What's inside here? This is t equals zero, right? So I've still got a b cos zero. I've got a minus c sine zero. 
Yes? What's that equal to? B, B, What's the initial velocity? It's three. Thank you. The question told me, okay? That's zero, okay? What do we have left here? That's one. Um, I'm going to multiply both sides by three on pi. So that gives me nine on pi. Yes? Have a look at that. X equals, okay? Nine on pi sine pi on three t plus minus, sorry, minus. Okay, right? So this is why they will sometimes hand you an equation like this instead of the one you're used to. And what they're trying to get away from is the phase shift because it's gross sometimes, right? So you, you, you do this, you, that's the alpha. Oh, you do that and then you do this. Well, this is me showing you finding alpha is sometimes terrible and you don't want to do it. Okay. So that's why sometimes we use this because no alpha is required. Okay.